1933, on a Sunday afternoon at the Church St. Francis in Midtown, Don Mariposa had summoned the heads of the families from New York and New Jersey. Although tensions were high, Mariposa chose to hold this meeting in a church as a show of goodwill. Regardless, Don Vito tasked his capos to ensure they had their men scattered across the area, where if something was to happen, they would be ready. This was a very tense point of time in the criminal underworld. They would need a miracle in order to keep things the way they were. After a small commotion and subtle digs at each other, the meeting officially began. Don Mariposa sat at the head of the table. The atmosphere was extremely tense. However, as usual, all the Dons were cordial. It was a chess game. In meetings like these, when people of power sit together in the same room, there's a set of unspoken rules, a code of conduct that they all follow. But what's interesting is that the first to get emotional in any way usually means they have already lost, which is why they chose their words very carefully. And yes, even bitter enemies can't just openly say whatever they want, so they have to be subtle. Mariposa started the meeting with a clearly rehearsed speech about peace and the need to start working together as businessmen rather than animals. This was no surprise. Everyone seemed somewhat bored, waiting for Mariposa to finally get to the point. He would go on to describe what would soon be what we now know as the commission, but he was not done. He then went on to make a speech about how due to the repeal of prohibition, his family had lost a significant amount of their income, and his men were not too happy. They wanted war to then take over everything from New York to New Jersey to replace the penny they were making during prohibition. Of course, this wasn't what most of his men wanted, rather, his own ambition. It was a threat, a threat that he could actually back. However, it was an introduction into his real demand. Price of not starting a destructive war that will in fact hurt everyone involved were only a few things. A small price to avoid any unnecessary hostilities. His first demand was not too surprising coming from an egotistical man like Mariposa. Since he was the most powerful, he demanded to be acknowledged as the boss of all bosses. One man, one boss. Hey, don't work no other way. Each Don could remain the boss of his own family. However, he would hold that title and must comply with his laws. They would all work for him now. The second demand was perhaps equally as disrespectful. Since he had a small beak, Mariposa demanded 15% of all their operations. Upon hearing this, the Dons looked to each other around the table, watching for each other's reaction. But not a single one of them gave away a thing. Although Vito noticed Anthony Stracci of Staten Island did look somewhat disturbed, and Atale Cuneo looked slightly uncomfortable. But on the other hand, Tatalia seemed to be delighted by this proposal and began to make the case why it was their best option. Even Mike DeMeo of New Jersey stood up and made his opinion known, completely backing this proposition. But let's see how Vito responds. To Mariposa's surprise, he agreed. Vito stated that it was actually reasonable, a worthy price if it meant it will maintain peace. The other Dons, too, seemed somewhat surprised, looking at each other again to see a hint of a reaction, but to no avail. In the end, Vito stood up and thanked Mariposa again, shaking his hand. He then made his final remarks and apologized for not joining in in the following banquet Mariposa had set up, citing he had promised to help his son finish a report on the mayor who was going to clean up the city, which then triggered a round of laughter from the Dons, except Mariposa. And since he was a man of his word, he had to tend to his son. They all then shook hands and exchanged a few polite words with the rest of the bosses. Then Sonny opened the door, and then the Don walked out, followed by Jenko and Luca Brazzi. So, there's quite a lot to unpack here, so let's start by analyzing Vito's strategy. 